Hello everybody, Jedi Warlock here and welcome back to another video here on the channel. Today, I wanted to take a short break from Lotro and WoW videos and talk about my thoughts on YouTube and content creation now that I've been the owner of this channel for almost two whole years. While this video may be insightful to other small content creators or people interested in starting a YouTube channel, I think it may also be beneficial to anybody who has watched my content or browses YouTube in general. Part of this video will discuss my history here on the platform, and part will cover my more contemporary attitudes regarding YouTube, but each part is interrelated in its own way. This is going to be a pretty chill video. I'm not going to have a ton of important visuals today, so feel free to put this one on in the background if you feel like it. I'm planning on breaking this video up into YouTube chapters that can be watched in any order. The appropriate timestamps can be found in the description or on the video progress bar. So, with all that being said, let's get right into it and explore my YouTube philosophy. About two years ago, I was just getting settled into my first term at university, and I was frankly getting a little bit bored. Most of my classes were online for obvious reasons, and seeing as there weren't a lot of social events going on, there wasn't a lot to do besides doing homework and playing video games. Turns out, this was just about the ideal environment for pushing me toward starting my very own YouTube channel. I had been thinking about exploring content creation while in high school, but I never seriously gave it any consideration since I was busy with school, work, and friends. Jump forward to 2020, and I was living on my own for the first time, and was really looking for a means to entertain myself while here at uni. After a week or two of debating, I decided to go for it and create both a YouTube and a Twitch account. My very first videos? Gameplay recordings of my Warcraft 3 Reforged streams. They're actually still up on my channel to this day, but since I didn't use any voiceover or editing whatsoever, they're far from what I'd consider my peak content. Nevertheless, this was my starting point on YouTube. Born out of boredom and curiosity, but a baseline from which I began to explore other types of content. A few months into my YouTube career, I began to feel an inkling of wanting to do more with the platform. Warcraft 3 Reforged and Star Trek Elite Force, a great old video game by the way, were fun little experiments just to see what, if any, views I would get. But I knew I wanted to branch out and develop more original content instead of just posting static playthroughs of video games. This marked the transition point between goal number one, experimentation, and goal number two, exploration, or trying out new forms of content to see what fits for my channel. My first real attempt at trying something original harnessed my love for MMO games, specifically Lord of the Rings Online, and became the project known as Middle Earth Meandering, where I would explore different places in the virtual Middle Earth through the eyes of one of my characters. While these videos also did not feature any voiceover, I believe they were important in my content creation journey as they were the first examples of serialized content on my channel, and also helped me develop a core tenet of my YouTube mission, to document and share the intricacies and secrets of massive virtual worlds. While I briefly returned to the Twitch VOD publishing method with my playthrough of StarCraft II, I quickly switched back to my more novel explorations of Lotro in Season 2 of the Middle-Earth Meandering videos, which yielded a noticeable increase in channel views. During this time, while my subscribers were still very few, I was beginning to build a positive community of watchers and commenters who helped grow my self-confidence in making and publishing videos on the platform. Come spring of 2021, and I was feeling confident enough to start adding voiceovers to my videos, and to reveal my passion for another great MMO game, World of Warcraft Classic. Through the aptly named WoW Alone series, I began to explore the massive game world by myself, giving viewers the added bonus of being able to listen to me talking over the highlights. These were also the first videos I practiced editing with, and judging from the video metrics, these two decisions really helped keep audiences entertained and invested. 
Coming back to school in fall of 2021, I had pretty much wrapped up the WoW Alone series and was eager to keep pushing the boundaries of what I could accomplish on YouTube. Gameplay videos, even with voiceover and some minor editing, didn't fully capture the feel of what I wanted my content on the platform to be. Instead of just publishing an archive of video game explorations, I wanted to present the concepts and ideas that built on these worlds and analyzed them from new perspectives. Said another way, I wanted to make truly original content within these games. Plus, recording myself playing games live put a lot of pressure on me to experience the game in a certain way or to cater to a certain audience's knowledge or expectations of the game, which sometimes limited my own enjoyment while playing. If you want to hear more of my thoughts on this, the video card that pops up here links to a channel update that discusses this more in depth. These changes in my thought process shifted my general goal from content exploration to goal number three, innovation, which really filled in another of my channel principles, to analyze and question the systems, stories, and settings of complex MMORPGs. Lotro and WoW are two of my favorite games of all time, and are probably the reason I'm such a huge fan of fantasy and MMO games today. Writing scripts, recording footage, and compiling everything into a cohesive final product is really rewarding from a hobby perspective, and to this day I've truly enjoyed iterating on my ideas about these games to give you all my takes on their incredible design. While goals number one and number two were basically stepping stones on my way to where I am today on YouTube, innovation is still the category that resonates with my content these days. By definition, this goal involves improving one's process over time while continually trying new things, both of which I like to believe I've been doing for a little over a year now. From trying out Lotro's newest expansion and breaking down its unique regions, to analyzing some of Classic WoW's most iconic zones using real-life geology of all things, applying new and different approaches to content creation is one of the best ways to generate interest in a channel. If you check out my video view counts within the past year or so, it becomes pretty clear that the innovation stage of my channel has yielded the best numerical results, which I couldn't be more happy about. But there's one last piece of the goal puzzle that I'd like to mention. More views usually translate to more comments and interactions with your viewer community. And while the vast, vast majority of said interactions are helpful and positive, there are always going to be a few mishaps in need of moderation. As such, the final piece of my YouTube mission kind of just fell into place on its own. To foster a positive community dynamic between viewers and content creators. Every YouTuber's goals and missions for content are different, but these three mission statements summarize what myself and my channel are all about, all held within the umbrella stage of content innovation. Within the YouTube community as a whole, I think it is beneficial to differentiate between the viewers and the content creators. For the most part, viewers on the platform have one primary goal, discovering and enjoying quality content that aligns with their interests. This is, in my opinion, the driving force behind statements such as find your niche on YouTube and cater to your audience, as viewers are more likely to return to your channel if they know what types of videos they can expect from you. These statements aren't meant to be advice at this point, merely examples to illustrate how viewers approach YouTube as a platform. The motivations of content creators vary more than those of viewers. From enjoying it as a hobby to doing it as a professional job, from cashing in YouTube checks to getting your very first views, there is a wide spectrum of what creators publish and expect from their publications. There are plenty of other videos that can explain this to a greater extent, but I think a lot of people these days, especially those outside of the platform, see YouTube as more of a hustle or get famous quick method than what it was originally designed to be, a video sharing site where people could post about their interests. I'm not overly involved with the news or drama of YouTube, 
but the things I do keep track of seem to be unfortunate parallels to the modern culture of social media in general. Flashy, insincere, and not a lot of substance. I know there are countless YouTubers out there who do care about their work and their viewers, and I strive to be one of them, but there are also a disappointing number who fall into the opposite category. I don't claim to have the remedy to these pervasive issues with the quality of content on the platform, but hopefully by adapting our mindset as to what makes social media valuable and worthwhile, we can influence some positive changes here on YouTube. The one thing I will say here to end this section on a positive note is that for the most part, the individual communities I've been a part of on YouTube have always been supportive of their content creators, including me. I've been introducing some channel polls to my audience lately, and it's super fun to be able to gather suggestions and preferences from viewers who know about and care about the content you're making. Despite the drama and all the other interesting things that happen on the YouTube headlines, Having simple, friendly interactions with other people is one of the things that really makes YouTube a fun hobby for me. One of the things that I think is crucial to my YouTube philosophy is my take on the whole numbers game that can easily turn into an obsession with the platform. Let's say after getting a hundred or so views on your last couple of videos, the next one gets a thousand views. From that point on, it's very easy to slip into the mindset that no video will ever be successful unless it too reaches a thousand views. Promoting videos excessively, checking the video metrics constantly, the list goes on. I've been guilty of this multiple times during my YouTube experience, but I think it's very important to take a step back and consider what sort of expectations you are establishing for yourself. It took me a while to overcome these sorts of feelings, but this is my bottom line. Yes, views are good. Yes, growth of the channel is good. But these things should not eclipse the true intentions or goals for the channel. Take my channel mission statements as an example. Even if 50 people, 5 people, 1 person watches my video and discovers something new about the world of Azeroth, or learns to appreciate an out-of-the-way quest in Middle-earth, then I'd say that project was a success. Keeping track of big milestones is fun, and long-term goals are important for the direction of a channel. But why obsess over these things? Focusing on developing quality content you care about, learning new things about your content interests, and sharing them with your audience, those are the methods that generate true satisfaction on YouTube. A few months back, I had a friend at uni ask me about my tips for starting a YouTube channel. I'll summarize a few of these here, but I also have a few new ones that I think might come in handy. Firstly, for those of you interested in starting your very own YouTube channel, I would 100% recommend it, provided you have the right attitude. No matter what your content focus is, if you have even a bit of time to spare investing in YouTube, I'd say go for it. I would not recommend starting a channel if making money is your primary goal or you're starting out wanting to become the next famous Fortnite streamer. Channel growth usually takes time, lots of time, and only through refining your video making process, seeking out who your core audience is going to be, and genuinely caring about the content you're making are you going to find personal success. As I discussed in the last section, the numbers, the monetization, the subscribers, all of that should be secondary a byproduct of a hobby that you're doing for fun, to share with others your interests and passions. Once you've started your channel and you're wanting to build more of an audience, I'd recommend publishing videos on a flexible yet consistent schedule. When viewers see that you're dedicated to your videos and are willing to put in the time to maintain the channel, they're going to want to stick around a lot more often than if the last published video was six months ago. With my school and work schedule, I usually end up posting three to five videos each month, but your capacity may differ. While taking breaks is totally normal for those in any hobby, generally, you should be shooting for some sort of regular upload schedule. To reiterate, this schedule can be flexible. You shouldn't be sacrificing quality just to get your next video out by Friday morning. Sometimes delays happen, 
and your core audience is going to appreciate the extra time and effort you put into the final product. So, you have your channel and you have a video made, but there are a few final tips I have to make sure your video reaches your target audience. Some things that I do to increase the likelihood of picking up some viewers include adding hashtags in my video descriptions and putting my videos into playlists for easy access between videos of similar topics. The biggest no that I can emphasize in this category is posting your video link on other sites like Reddit, also something of which I've been guilty of in the past. In my experience, while this may help in the short term to generate views, this inorganic growth hurts your promotion in the long term. Keeping things in-house, posting your videos consistently, and adding in some hashtags to link your content have, so far, been the best methods of promoting my videos to my target audience. My final point here, though it might be a bit repetitive, is to remind you that it is okay to start out small. I did an experience hardly any growth for almost the first whole year on YouTube, and that is all right. Trying new things, innovating on your process, and always putting fun and your audience ahead of the numbers is what counts. Read and respond to every comment. Give them hearts. Visit the channels of viewers who have subscribed to you. All of these small things can have big impacts on how you see yourself as a content creator, but also how your viewers see you. So don't be afraid to branch out. Build a sense of community with your viewers and similar YouTubers. You'll be much more satisfied with the results. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video conveyed a bit about my YouTube philosophy and my reasons for making content here on the platform. To everyone who has watched, liked, commented, or subscribed during the past two years, I've really appreciated all of your support and kind words. I'm really looking forward to showing you what I have planned next, so stay tuned. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments, subscribe if you're new to join the Jedi Order, and until next time, peace.